Good thing Kansas State won the tip. My ears are ringing. <laughs> I think our ears are going to take quite a bit of abuse tonight. Well, Dewan Harris starting off on Marquise Noel, and they're going to try to corral him. Already a switch. Johnson with the first shot, tried to bank it and tipped around. Saved by Carter along the sideline. Blind pass for Tomlin from Johnson eludes him. The Kansas State, or Kansas, excuse me, does a lot of switching, and I think you're going to see the same thing against Kansas State. They're likely to be switching a lot of the screens and exchanges. The, the interesting thing is, what did they do with Marquise Noel? Are they going to trap? Will they switch with him? And will Kansas State be able to take advantage of some of those switches? Harris open for a three. He had only three points two weeks ago in Manhattan. And knocks down his first three-point attempt of the game. Kansas State got held up on a ball screen. David Gasson did not switch out and switch up. And Harris was wide open. Tomlin over Jalen Wilson. And Naquan Tomlin is a key player in this game. Only been playing four years of basketball. Did not even play in high school. Transferred here from junior college. He is long, athletic. He can handle it and pass it. And he can switch out onto any matchup defensively. Skip pass from Adams. McCuller able to come down with it. Drive baseline. Can't get to the rim as he's fouled. That was a heck of a catch by Kevin McCuller. And then the strong drive. Every time Kansas drives it, they've got to drive strong to make sure they get a piece of the paint. Was that a uh, big sigh of relief on Saturday in Lexington when they snapped this three-game losing skip? Well, it was for, for Bill Self and his staff, and you could tell by his reaction after the game. He turned to the bench as time was running out and gave out a yell. I mean, that was a game they wanted and a game that they needed. And Kevin McCuller, after getting injured in the game, came back and just had some great minutes defensively on the glass, had a double-double. He really gutted through that ankle injury. And without him in the second half, I don't know that Kansas wins that game. And he gets the second free throw to go. That first foul for K-State, by the way, was on Keontae Johnson. Keontae bumps into McCuller, puts it up off the glass, and McCuller rips down the board. Great job by McCuller to force Johnson left and stay in front of him and then still get the rebound. And Keontae Johnson poked it away from Wilson. Carter lost control, and then I think Wilson knocked it out from behind. They say last touch by the Wildcats. Well, both teams are active with their hands, getting steals, and Kansas State has had some turnover issues throughout the season. They've got a 19, 20% turnover rate, and you better take care of the ball in this building or things can get away from you in a hurry. Brady Tick threads a pass to Wilson, and he missed it off the glass. Mahomes would have been happy with that window. Noel will shoot two. A.J. Adams picks up the foul, his first. There's Coach Tang, and is there anybody else leading uh, among the leaders for National Coach of the Year besides Jerome Tang? Well, if you go versus expectations, Kansas State was picked last in the Big 12 in the preseason polls. But there were only two players on the roster when Jerome Tang took over. But he brought in a number of transfers. Everybody fit the expected culture. And it's been similar to when he was an assistant to Scott Drew at Baylor. You know, they call it a culture of joy. Everything's positive, but they fight like crazy when they're on the floor. We're tied at four with about two and a half minutes gone in Lawrence. Kansas wants to get the ball to the third side of the floor. And they keep the floor space so wide and in the corners, it's going to open up the middle. Brady Dick leans in from 14, some contact there. That, that's an area where I think Brady Dick is continuing to improve. Now, he's a great shooter, not a good one, but a great one. 
But now he's doing a better job of driving closeouts, moving without the ball. He's not going to get a lot of stationary jump shots. He, he's a target now of opposing defenses. But I think he's really starting to evolve as an offensive player to find openings after his primary option is taken away. And the first big news story is two fouls on Keontae Johnson very early in this game. Yeah, I'm not sure how long Jerome Tang's going to want to keep him on the bench. That's a lot of firepower sitting next to him. Well, the first meeting 14 days ago it was the Jayhawks that had three starters that fouled out by the time they got to overtime and wound up losing by one. There's that double drag up top, the well defended. Dewan Harris not switching off. Marquise Noel, the range. Spectacular. When you're good enough, you are big enough. <laughs> And he is big enough. He may be small, but he plays much bigger. And what a dynamic scorer and passer Marquise Noel is. He's been a revelation this year. And just four points two weeks ago against Kansas. I think we can safely assume he's going to have a lot more than four tonight. Now you give Marquise Noel a little bit of space because he's such a dynamic driver. But you give him too much space. Juan Harris just playing a little bit too far off with his hands down. Got some late pressure, but the key was Noel being able to get into his shot comfortably to get it off. Noel missed all four of his three-point attempts in the first matchup. And here's Grady Dick missing a three on the left corner for the Jayhawks. Really good cut by Grady Dick down into the opposite corner to get open. Tomlin gets it to the rim, batted away. Masood, who was checked in for Johnson, had an opportunity. He gets it from Carter and fires up a two. That's a two-point shot for Ish Masood. That's 10 of his last 14 from the three-point line in his last four games. You ha you cannot let Masood shoot it from the catch spot. He has to be made to dribble. Now, that was a broken play. It's more difficult. Jalen Wilson trying to answer for the Jayhawks and does so. Tomlin, three. Well, it's impressive how Marquise Noel finds open people. That hook pass was right on the money. Great move. Wilson. A little short. Well, he might have missed it, but that was beautiful ball movement. Offensive foul on Noel. Marquise Noel so good with the ball little step back knocks it down and then Jalen Wilson answers it on the other end a little bit too much space lack of that with Johnson back on the floor so obviously Jerome Tank thought like we did that it was a foul initially called on Keontae Johnson but he's back on the floor with just one person Anytime Jalen Wilson is down under the basket, you have to expect him to be coming off screens. He can curl it, fade it. Good pass. Skips it. Three. Harris off the heel. Adams had a hand on it, but here comes Noel. The first thing you have to do with Noel is corral him in transition so he can't get a full head of steam. He is so fast with the ball. McCuller defending Johnson. Adams helps out defensively. Gasson. And Gasson missed several games with an ankle, but came back against Florida, had nine points, couple of steals, gave some really good minutes. Lob for Adams. KJ Adams sets the ball screen in the slot, rolls right to the basket. And Dewan Harris, one of the best passers in the country, second to Marquise Noel in assists in the Big 12, finds him. Adams did not miss a shot in the first meeting two weeks ago, going six to six from the field. That Somehow caroms its way to Carter now back to Sills. He's gonna take a long three Kansas was trapping Noel and then playing out of it Blocky foul gonna be called on Desi Sills Whenever KJ Adams sets a ball screen He rolls hard to the basket. Sometimes it's a short roll, but it drew two to the ball Keontae Johnson not able to get there from the corner and just an easy lob up top to 
KJ Adams, he may be undersized, but he is explosive off the floor. And he's had double figure scoring games in, in 12 of his last 14 games, including a terrific 17 point performance at Kentucky and Rupp Arena. He has really evolved as an offensive player, hasn't he, in the last six, eight weeks? Well, he's such a good finisher and his ability to roll, and not everybody can catch those short rolls without traveling. He's a really good playmaker. Ernest Uday, who gave Kansas, well, very good minutes on Saturday in there now, and cleans up the miss. And with Zuby Edgerfor out with that ankle problem, that means that Uday is going to get even more minutes, and he was very good in his minutes at Kentucky. Hassan able to help break a little bit of a scoring drought for the Wildcats and make it a two-point game. McCullers three. He's kind of struggled from beyond the arc recently, Jay, but he had a huge one in Kentucky on Saturday as well. Biggest shot of the game. He made a three on a broken play as the shot clock was going down. That was a backbreaker. I mean, Jalen Wilson hit a couple down the stretch. You know, those three-point baskets at the end of the game against Kentucky were incredibly impressive. Kansas foul on Grady Dick. So McCuller, who was scoreless in that game two weeks ago in Manhattan, only had two field goal attempts. Knocking down a three, and there's Gasson at the line shooting two. Well, if I remember right, McCuller was fighting foul trouble the whole game. I think he picked up his fourth foul with ten minutes to go in regulation, and, you know, that's no way to play. It's such an intense game, but you still have to you know, maintain your discipline and not pick up any cheap ones You can get a basket back, but you can't get a foul back McCuller played 23 minutes of that first game against K-State averages about 31 minutes per game Yeah, I was just about to say they need him up, you know in the 30s Because he's so valuable as a defender. He's, he's there. I think Dewan Harris is Kansas's best defender but McCuller is their most versatile because he can literally guard every spot on the floor and switch out. Candace has Yesifu in. Harris flips up a three. And Harris trying to be aggressive. They're going under every screen and essentially daring him to shoot. He hit his first three. He's missed his last two. Noel off the mark. I think they're going to get Gasson on that. And that will be the case. Well, Gasson is a really good offensive rebounder. And he had a little run up there, but the officials just thought there was a little too much contact. And that is two on Gasson. He's going to leave the floor, as does Noel for the first time tonight. We got Tomlin guarding Kevin McCuller. That puts Masood, but they're switching a lot of exchanges as well, so you'll be guarding different guys. Pull up McCuller. Sills. That's touched by Sills, Kansas ball. Yeah, Dewan Harris went after that rebound and essentially put Kansas State in a position to bobble it out of bounds. Otherwise, Masood gets that and takes it the other way. Jerome Tang in the ear of John Higgins. Higgins, Kip Kissinger, Marcus Pettigrew, our crew tonight. Harris long to McCuller Johnson breaks into Uday spins on that left pivot foot and he'll get two shots and Uday did a really good job right up until the very end when he tried to block the ball out of the hands of Keontae Johnson. He, he put his body right there, and everything was really good. But just stay big and make him take a tough shot over you. you know, there's never been a shutout in basketball, but Bill Self asking for a walk. It's funny, the referees never go back and change those things. No. <laughs> Makes the coaches feel better. What a journey it's been for Keontae Johnson, preseason player of the year in the SEC, and then... Later that season, collapsed during the game. And now transfer to Kansas State. And it's been a program-changing pickup for the Wildcats. Well, not only is Keontae Johnson a, a great basketball player, but he's a great teammate. He doesn't ask for any special treatment. He does everything everybody else does. And 
Now the color took a bump there and didn't get the call. He was looking for one. Color down one of four from the field, knocked away. Harris trying to weave through traffic. Takes a bump from the seed. And a technical foul has just been assessed on Jerome Tang. Yeah, Jerome Tang wanted that one. He was asking for that because he felt that the, the contact on both ends was called differently. But when Keontae Johnson went to the basket, got all that contact, didn't get a call, and yet Masood gets the foul on the other end. He wanted that. Kate's Heating and Cooling is proud to be your... We talk to each other. Chris, thanks very much. Obviously, as you mentioned, that was Jerome Tang. Had a reason he wanted to do that. Going to give up four free throws here. They're calling this uh, Tom Gilbert, their SID, the first real technical foul he's got. He got one earlier this season because he accidentally ran it to the ref. <laughs> and we teed him up. So this is the first one he's gotten on purpose as the head coach at K-State. They don't call that incidental contact on the I, I, I guess not. <laughs> well, you're not going to find a better better person in the game than Jerome Tang, but he is a cutthroat competitor just like Bill Self, and he wants to, wants to make sure that he advocates for his team and make sure they get, the, get a fair shake on the road. Kind of an early statement from the Kansas State head coach here in this game. Yeah, to sometimes, you know, coaches, as you know, better than I do, you know, some coaches use that to fire their team up and to try to make a point. It's still early in the game. It wasn't like that was a late technical that was really affecting. And six point lead for the Jayhawks, their largest of the game. Going to get a Kansas foul. Going to go on to Juan Harris, his first. Kansas State in the first game in Manhattan did a really good job on out-of-bounds underneath situations got a couple of easy baskets Including You know Desi Sills just going right down the lane After Marquise Noel would go through a little elevator screen. Yes, if who's guarding him right now yeah, Much better defended by Kansas three is pursued Johnson had a hand on it. Pettifer runs it down to the corner for the Jayhawks. Nude did a really good job of going after that rebound. Yes, it threw off the bench for the Jayhawks. Trades a three. Well, bench scoring has been an issue for Kansas, and Joseph Yesifu had five points and three rebounds at Kansas State. They need oh. that production. Oh, oh, my goodness. Marquise Noel. He's just got no fear. He's not by He's played at Rucker Park his whole life. He's not worried about this. Harlem Allen Fieldhouse. Shades here, Jay. <laughs> well, they say that, that, you know, young players don't play pickup ball, play on the playgrounds, but he yeah. did. Yes, if who brings it ahead for Kansas. Pettifer to reverse to the lane for Bobby Pettifer. From the corner, swish. What an answer by Naquan Tomlin. He just had 11 points and six rebounds against Florida. He's so mobile at his size. Brady Dick responding for the Jayhawks. Deflected. Yes, if you're trying to save it, bounced off the floor. Corralled by Jalen Wilson. Wilson bumps in the well at midcourt. They play on. Yeah, Kansas State's got to get more pressure on Kansas right now. Kansas has gotten out in transition, and there's been too much space for Jerome Tang's liking. And now Wilson's got a matchup he can go against.
his consistency at such a high level that's been the most impressive and it's really been all season long but the last four games he's been nothing short of magnificent what is it 38 30 23 and 22 against the kind of competition that Kansas is playing against. I mean, Kansas already played, what, 10 quad one games? They're going to play another 9 or 10 before the season's over. Tomlin's pass picked off. It's up ahead now for K.J. Adams. He spins and stops it. Kansas taking advantage of the turnovers. Johnson with a three. Quiet the crowd after he had missed his first three shots from the field tonight. Boy, what a great jab step answer for that three. But how about KJ Adams in transition? It looked like he might charge. He just spun off Tomlin and got the dunk. Just magnificent. Yes, if who had a step on Sills, Desi grabs him and picks up the foul. Kansas in transition again. The pass ahead. Thought he might charge, but no, he just spins off Naquan Tomlin. And talk about explosive off the floor. That is not easy to do, but KJ Adams made it look easy. Eight team fouls against K State in the front end of a one and one missed by Yesifu. Kansas State has to start moving the ball. Johnson taking it right to the rim aggressively, gets a foul on Wilson. Just bully ball. Jalen Wilson gave him a little bit too much space and sometimes when you back off a downhill driver And he did go left there. I mean you want to force him to his left But he just bullied his way to the basket and just got his shoulders beyond The body of Jalen Wilson and that contact because he wasn't in the legal guarding position anymore is an automatic foul Deontay finishes off the three-point play seven points now for Johnson Look how spread the floor is for Kansas. They've got a lot of space in which to operate. Wilson short that time with a three. And even though that's an open three, Kansas still wants to drive the ball. Shot fake and drive, move it from side to side, and then tack the paint off the dribble. Then you can force help and then play out of it for open threes. Noel, eyeballing Keontae. Passes to him, tried to thread it on the bounce pass. Dick looking to tie it up. And a timeout comes from K-State. They already burned one earlier, so that's going to be the second Wildcat timeout here of the first half. So we're under eight minutes to play, first half. And it's not like Kansas State shooting the ball poorly. Kansas State, four of eight from three. Normally, you'd be really happy with that. But Kansas State has six turnovers in this ballgame to only one for Kansas. And Kansas has scored ten points off those six K-State turnovers. Jayhawks were up by 13. A little 6-0 run here by K-State. Has cut it to seven. All six of those points scored by Keontae Johnson. Yeah, Keontae Johnson has to be a focal point here. Here he is, a long two. Thus far, you haven't really seen Kansas State attack Kansas' ball screen coverage. It's been mostly isolation. Off the screen, Grady Dick in and out. And Grady Dick came off a little fade screen, then turned and came right back for a rescreen to the ball. That's hard action to guard. Boy, what a job by McCullough to stay in front of Noel. Almost a turnover. Not sure Johnson was the intended target. He came up with a pass and rattles it home. But how about that move by Keontae Johnson? Just basically went into the chest of Jalen Wilson. Froze him and even knocked him back. That was a big time move. And it, the strength of Keontae Johnson was evident right there. Take a look at Johnson. He's cut off by Jalen Wilson and just without dropping the shoulder, just gets right into his chest and knocks him back a little bit, gives him the space to put up that right handed, essentially jump hook push shot. That was a big time move. And last foul on Kansas on KJ Adams, who now he has two, so he's come out of the game, and Uday got a little bit too much of the body, according to John Higgins. Now Adams on the bench with two, he fouled out. He was one of the three Kansas starters that fouled out in the game in Manhattan, and that's going to bring Zach Clements off the bench for the Jayhawks, replacing Uday, who has two fouls now. He's still out of the line shooting, 
17 fouls against the Jayhawks. One and one for Noel. And Noel's a great free throw shooter. Shoots 87 percent. That's third in the conference. Well, tickets on sale now. The 2023 Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Bid tip off March 8th. Women tip a day later. You get your tickets online. Big12sports.com slash buy tickets. See you in Kansas City. 10 all run here for K-State. Jay's gotten them right back in this game. Jalen Wilson down low, wide open. And he got a little far under the basket, trying to reach around to put that in. He gets fouled by Carter. Now there's, it's supposedly going to be in the Kelsey Bowl. That's what the Super Bowl is now. He and his brother Jason. And Travis, who's here at the game tonight. What a great guy. Yeah, he's nice to everybody he comes into contact with. And he's not only nine days away from the Super Bowl, he's ten days away from golf season. Cincinnati mayor may disagree with you. He does not like being called a jabroni. <laughs> he may not like it, but he got called that. <laughs> there are a lot of people in the younger generation that had to go online to look up what a jabroni was, which basically means kind of a foolish person. I learned that that term in wedding crashers. <laughs> Thank you, Vince Vaughn. Going to stay with K-State. Kansas has been active defensively. And they've been switching most every screen and exchange, but they've gotten a number of deflections, and they've been a little bit more disruptive than Kansas State has been on their end. Well, tough shot from the corner, well defended by Harris. Wilson running the other way, a little too strong, and McCuller came crashing in, and I think they're going to call that on Keontae Johnson, and they will, and that will be his second foul this time. So tough to turn and find a blockout. McCuller just came in from the right wing, unobstructed. But Jalen Wilson grabbed that rebound, and it was a rip and run, just a grab and go. He doesn't have to outlet it. He could take it, take it himself, and he actually got fouled there. It just wasn't called. There's no way Desi Sills was in legal guarding position there, so that should have been a foul, but it worked out very well to pick up a foul on a key player. Desi Sills about wound up in the student section yeah. up there. <laughs> he had a pretty good runway after that. <laughs> yeah, Sills was so good in, in Manhattan at 24 points in that game. He's in the running for six man of the year. He and maybe Sabari, uh, Serge Abari Rice of Texas. I've always, I've always wondered about the six man thing. Like, where's the love for the fifth man? <laughs> like, the fifth starter never gets any love. It's just so unfair. Johnson trying to flush. He couldn't finish it. Good pass. Harris. Made his first three attempt of the night. Has missed three six. They get it back. McCuller Harris reverses. Mark, that is just big time basketball right there. The hustle by Grady Dick, the pass, and then the extra pass, magnificent. Clements deflected that away. Here come the Jayhawks again. Dick got contact from Tomlin, just passed off to Jalen Wilson, who drives. No offensive foul. No bucket. Now watch Grady Dick here, that extra pass, and then look how he goes after the rebound. Just knocks it away, grabs it, and then gets it to McCuller, and a beautiful pass to Dewan Harris. That's just big-time basketball right there by Kansas. Not giving up on a play. Well, the Kansas foul is called on Zach Clements. Bill Self is asking some questions. John Higgins, along with Marcus Pettigrew, have gone to the monitor. Well, it's tough when they play it on the, the big screen where everybody can see it. Uh, that's what makes the, the job even tougher for officials. Most fans didn't see the initial action, but then they look at the replay in the arena, and you know, the officials have to listen to it. Well, it is a foul on Zach Clements, his first. Clements, who played six minutes of the game at K-State two weeks ago. Getting some time here with K.J. Adams on the bench with a couple of fouls.
Kansas has had so many deflections in this ball game. So Kansas State has to work some pass fakes in. Johnson, deep three. His second three of the night. That's now a dozen points. Well, he's Keontae got, Johnson. He's got that low release, but he had so much space. I'm not sure McCullough thought he'd pull the trigger from that far out. So Keontae has a dozen. Noel has ten. The two leading scorers in this game. Wilson trying to get around Masu. Tough shot. In and out. He got it off the floor by Tomlin. A good defensive exchange for Kansas State. When you get a stop, you have to validate it with a bucket. Off the right side that time, Noel Skying almost had it wrapped up, but it came out of his arms and bounced right to Clements. Brady Dick. Kansas is such a fast basketball team in transition. Not just how fast they run, but they'll pass ahead. That puts a lot of pressure on your transition defense. Good job by Clements to corral the ball, make Noel pick it up. Six on the shot clock. Noel elects to shoot one from about two steps inside the front court. Harris. A three from Brady Dick. Kansas has had some opportunities. That might have been a good one to shot fake and drive it. Clements knocked it out. Tomlin gets it back. His pass for the well picked off by Brady Dick. He's got Wilson and McCullough with him. Gives it to Jalen who shoots a three. There was a ton of contact on that Kansas State drive, and Kansas gets the three the other way. Their transition offense has been excellent. Tomlin gets into the lane, lost it. McCuller almost lost the dribble, but maintains it. Is a two according to John Higgins, but another made field goal from Jalen Wilson. Kansas State needs a ball reversal here. Everything's been off one side of the floor and a quick shot. Noel trying to get it to Tomlin. That's picked off by McCuller. He feeds Harris. Wilson looked up a little too quick and didn't take the pass cleanly the other way. Johnson can't convert for K-State. What a challenge by Zach Clements. Now he can make this. Ten turnovers. And the three-point shooting, a good bit of it in transition has been outstanding for Kansas and it's been spread out it's not like it's been just a couple of players but out of that timeout Kansas State's got to run some offense that gets the ball from one side of the floor to the other they've run initial action and Kansas has guarded it very well they've got to get to the second or third action Jayhawks on an 8-0 run here back to a 13-point lead their largest of the night Keontae Johnson ends that run right there. Well, they're making him take tough shots, and he is making them. But he's got a lot of game. And he's built like a tight end. <laughs> You're not kidding. He and, he and Travis Kelsey could have a nice <laughs> have a nice battle down, the, down on the line of scrimmage. Wilson takes some contact. He looks straight from Sill. And that shows Jalen Wilson's versatility. He can operate at the three-point line. He's excellent driving the ball, especially to the right. But then he can also take you down into the post and operate there. We're coming up this Saturday here on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. 15th ranked TCU. They will travel to Stillwater taking on Oklahoma State. That's at 2 Eastern, 1 Central here on Big 12 Now. Mark, this seems like Kansas is having their way with Kansas State. But this is a big 
you know, minute 18 of the first half. If Kansas State can get a score here, get a stop and a score, you know, there's a lot of time and a lot of basketball left in this game, and that, that would help Kansas State weather this first half, which has been blistering from Kansas. What a pass. Yes, a food. In the three earlier misses that one. We're going to get a flop on Yesifu. And then it's going to bring a Class B technical and a free throw for K-State. If Kansas State can get it under 10 at halftime, there's just something about being down single digits. And get a little bit of confidence going into halftime. We could see a different Kansas State team come out in the second half. See the free throws, of course, Kansas, due to a technical on Jerome Tang. Had a couple of free throws in that fashion and have attempted 15 already. Wildcats look to cut into this 12 point deficit. Under a minute to go, first half from Allen Fieldhouse. Well, a good quick trap by Zach Clemens just to stop that action. Now in isolation for Johnson. Tomlin, second effort. Two shots were coming for Naquan Tomlin. Well, the job Kansas has done on Marquise Noel has really been impressive. Yeah, every time he comes off any sort of ball screen action, they're just giving him a quick trap for a dribble or two and then recovering. And Kansas State is going to have to figure out a way to throw out of that and try to attack. Sills is going to come out. So is Keontae Johnson. We do not want to see Keontae pick up a third foul. Sills also with two, so they both come off the floor. Tomlin drains both and gets them closer to getting this to a single-digit deficit. Looks like a little zone here now down the stretch for Kansas State. So 2-3, they're extending a bit. That middle's going to be open. Bill Self wants to talk it over. He'll use the use it or lose it timeout. I wouldn't be surprised here to see Kansas get some sort of ball screen action against this zone and then roll somebody down, you know, have somebody in the post and then roll a cutter through. But now K-State smartly goes back to man. It's a long two, Clements. And that's going to be a push. Wow, that's a big Ooh. call. I was wondering it may be on Jalen Wilson, yeah, it's but on it is not. It's on Masood, his second. So what could have been, what seemed like it could have been a couple of free throws for Kansas State, or if they secured the rebound, take it down, get a two or a three. Now, Kansas has an opportunity to stretch this lead out. Masood now with a couple of fouls. K-State brings Johnson back into the game. And just an offense-defense substitution. Put him back in to get a score as long as he's on charge is a good decision. Wildcats looking for the final shot of this first half. Deep three Noel off the left side. But just settled. Tomlin some contact on Wilson unintentional. The crowd didn't like that. And the first half comes to an end with a 12-point edge for the Jayhawks. Done. But Kansas starting out the second half with the basketball. And if Kansas State, they're only down 12. If they can get a stop and a score, you know, they just can't rely on Johnson and Noel to ISO and score points every time down. they got to move the ball. K.J. Adams. With a quick hand one, not the way K-State wanted to start things defensively. Keontae Johnson just picked up his third. Chris, what's on the mind of Coach Tang? Well, he wants 
He wants more hustle plays. He wants more hustle plays. We said when you look at what Kansas has done, the effort and energy, half their points are on transition buckets or on second chance points. So wanting to his team to up, 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 up the effort level. Well, the first play down the floor for Kansas, they're able to get a, a screen and a dive to the basket, an easy score for K.J. Adams. So the second half starting out much like the first did. But Dewan Harris doing such a good job making it difficult for Noel to make a catch and another deflection. So three fouls now on Keontae Johnson after that last defensive sequence. He is the first player on either team to three. Reach in there. Much like we've seen, Mark, much like you've seen Kansas, you know, get ball reversal. You, know, you make the defense move and give the defense a chance to make a mistake. We have not seen as much of that from Kansas State. A lot of their a lot of their shots have come off their first action, and that's not going to be good enough on the road in a Big 12 environment like Allen Fieldhouse. Well, KJ Adams picks up his third, so he's the first Jayhawk to three, and it brings Ernest Uday into the game for KU. Cam Carter on the drive. Got smothered there. The ball taken right away by Uday. What a nice job by Uday to stay big. Wilson. Spin move. McCuller. Tip. No third try after a rebound by David Gasson. But Jalen Wilson wanted that against Keontae Johnson. Carter. Knocks down a three. You get the K-State offense going here in half number two. Yeah, after getting a stop and getting down with the ball down the four quickly, that's the kind of quick shot you want to take. Those threes in transition are really good shots. First bucket of the night for Cam Carter. A good pressure on the ball by Carter because Uday was wide open. Uday was matched up after that switch with Noel, and to say he had a height and weight advantage would be a massive understatement. Well, Uday has done a really good job in the last two games that he's been in there. He had four points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of steals against Kentucky in 10 minutes or so. He's long-armed, he's a good athlete that can really change ends. And with that 7-3 wingspan, if he just stays big and uses his body and positioning, he can be difficult to score over. Uday sinks the free throw. Okay, you did get good news on Zuby Edge of four. A sprained foot. Looks like it's going to keep him out for about another three weeks, but there was some concern and maybe season ending. It appears it will be not. A good denial by Grady Dick. Look how far. Marquise Noel had to come to get it, but you can't leave the ball. Kansas fortunate there. Kohler brings it up for the Jayhawks. Drives towards the rim. Off the left side. Apparently some contact though. Let's see where this is going on. It's a blocking foul on Gasson. His third, so he joins. Keontae Johnson with three fouls. And does he actually just those two with three fouls? And I'm sure a lot of fans are thinking, hey, some of these calls are being made late, but they're really not. The officials have been instructed by the NCAA supervisor to, to give it a beat, you know, take take your time in making the call and let it play out. You know, you don't get bonus points for having the whistle match the action. Sills. Coming in from K-State. Toblin and Gasson take a seat. Well, McCullough had a good floor game in that first half. He might not have made a bunch of shots, but just one of four from the field, that being the three that he hit. But he had seven, seven rebounds, three assists, two steals, and six points in that first half. Most of McCullough's damage has come from the line. Five of his eight points have come from the strike. Strip there. Uday, his third. It's a little bit of over pursuit by Uday and when still spun back, sort of got his feet tangled up. The crowd doesn't like it.
Deontay Johnson with McCuller. Sills kicks. This is an open three, Noel. That's a two. Well, we've had a bunch of those. Well, just three pointers. Yeah, Mark, just the ball movement. And then the attack of the paint draws help, and then you can kick it to an open shooter. And that's a different shot that Kansas State was getting in the first half. Good rebound. Uday got the board, feeding Harris short with a shot. Scrum on the floor, it's tied up. Possession arrow. K State. I'm not sure whether Bill Self wanted Uday to go up with that ball after he grabbed the rebound. I thought that was the exact right pass to make out to Dewan Harris in the corner for that step in three. He just missed it, but that's a that's the best time in my judgment to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound. Noel scooting towards the rim, blocked away. Going to stay with the Wildcats. There's that 7-3 wingspan. Uday keeping his body away from Noel and just knocking it away with those long arms when he let it go. Catch and shoot off the inbounds. Just the hair off the mark for Marquise Noel. Three minutes gone here in the second half. Double point lead for the Jayhawks. Noel had it knocked away by Wilson. Well, you really have to protect the ball when you're driving against Marquise Noel. His hands are so quick, and he's really strong, even though he's just 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, you show him the ball, he's going to grab it with both hands. Quick hand, Sills gets the steal, makes a spin move. Got too far underneath the bucket, and Brady Dick fouled him. Two on Brady Dick. It gives Kansas State a chance to chip away at this 11-point lead. There's just a, I don't know what it is, but there's just a different feeling for a team when you cut a lead to under double digits. Just puts a little more game pressure on the opponent. You mentioned earlier the first meeting, Sills came off the bench 24 points in 34 minutes. And he's, had, he's had only five points since that, this being his sixth and perhaps his seventh if he makes this. Never wins this game. Chance to stay near the top. K State, a chance to tie Texas for the conference lead if they're able to get a win here. You have to think the Big 12 regular season champs going to have five or six losses in this league. Wilson's three. Uday got knocked and fouled. Maybe Eziola. Uday has been really active. He's been moving his feet, got right in front of the rim, made it difficult for Kansas State to box him out, and they had to foul him to keep getting the stick back. Abe Eziola in the game for the first time. And then here in the second half for K-State. You always have to watch Lob here. Sometimes it's a second guy, and there it is. Trying to bounce it into the color, but there's Noel. Sills. Hockey foul on Kansas. And now Sills. Ahead to the strike. They got Grady Dick. I'm not sure that was the time to try to take a charge. That's three on Grady Dick now. 14 foul of the half against the Jayhawks. Yes, the food is going to take Grady Dick's spot. Yes, the food hit a three in the first half. And Kansas has has gotten better bench production quality minutes where there hasn't been a, a dip from the bench Jayhawks 11 bench points to five for the K-State bench so far tonight Got the switch Wilson kick three Missed by Yesifu. Loose ball is grabbed off the deck by Sills. Well, Kansas State's defense in the first few possessions of the second half has been much stingier. Kansas has missed the last seven from the field. And... That's 
Kansas foul going against Uday, and that's four on him. In a time of evolution, it is out. Kansas that can soften him up a little bit. Certainly puts K.J. Adams and Grady Dick on the bench for a little while. That's some offensive firepower sitting next to Big Phil Self. So where does Kansas go for offense with those guys on the bench? Still sinks the first. He's now four or five from the line tonight. Like all his scoring has come from the strike. What's at stake? It's been 40 years since K-State has won both regular season meetings against KU. Mayhawks trying to avoid back-to-back -back home losses. Is that going all the way back to the Rolando Blackman Ed Neely teams? <laughs> that Jack Hartman coach. Uh, These states had it shared some really great coaches in their history. No question. Clements. It's a good cut. Harris. Got it to go. Boy, Zach Clements kept his poise there, but that was a really good cut by Dewan Harris right down the lane line. Wins the drop for the Jayhawks, who had missed seven straight from the field. One dribble, now it's Giola. His first shot attempt of the game. He tried to make that fading away instead of taking it strong to the rim. Tough three from the corner in the left corner. McCullough is two from two for two from three. And now two of eight overall. But he has been outstanding on the glass and defensively. What a what a defensive play. McCullough with a block. It's out of bounds, staying with K-State. McCullough, who did not score in the game in Manhattan two weeks ago, has a double-double tonight. 11 points, 10 rebounds, his seventh double-double of the season. Just great defense, staying in front. And then blocking the ball right out of the hands of Cam Carter. And he can guard anybody. Now he's on Keontae Johnson, but they're switching, so he'll likely be guarding somebody else soon. Keontae, three out front. Loose ball on the deck. Wilson. Good pass. McCuller, one fake, the shot. He was probably feeling it, but that could be a shot fake and drive, too. Tomlin takes a little bump, and that drops. He's got a lot of ability. Naquan Tomlin, who we mentioned, has only been playing basketball for a little over four years. And his ceiling is high. He has the look of a guy that's going to play pro basketball. No question. I mean, he can guard multiple positions. He can really handle it. And his offensive game will come. Good post up by Clements. Clements had the advantage on the switch with the shorter sills, and he has an opportunity for a three-point play. You know, Bill Self coach teams, when the ball is in, at that angle, I mean, that was a 30-foot post pass. But Clements did a great job of getting post position right in front of the rim, and then right in, yeah, he's bigger than Desi Sills, went right into his body, and then completed that with the left hand. And Clements yesterday, I was at practice yesterday, and he was on the scout team. And he really looked good because he can shoot it. He can stretch the floor And he's getting quality minutes in this game and delivering Sills by the way joins Keontae Johnson and Gasson with three fouls Brady Dick KJ Adams have three for KU Ude with four and Kansas State just can't get multiple stops consecutive stops And that's what you're gonna need Tomlin third space made it look easy that time. Yeah, just a strong left-hand drive And Clemens didn't want to pick up the foul He's like the US Postal Service man he delivers through anything Noel took some contact from McCuller. He took a shot and he's down. It might be James Westfall and Dr. Kenneth Noisewater there. Looks like he's holding that 
Actually, it looks like he's holding the elbow, the right elbow. Noel perfect from the line tonight, 5 of 5. He's close to a 90% free throw shooter. We'll see if that affects him at all. But he's among the best small guards in the country. Guards under six feet. Kihei Clark of Virginia be on that list. Nakai Ziegler of Tennessee. Darius McGee of Liberty. Now look at these guys. Tiger Campbell of UCLA at 5'11 and have to play the pivot. <laughs> He's the big man. Huh? That would be, be a quick, fast, excellent defensive team. You might not be able to get it down in the post because you can't get it across half court against that, that quintet. Well, a 10-point game. Yesufu, no, and here's a chance, Jay. K-State gets a defensive stop. Can they get this down to single digits? Carter. With Dewan Harris. Able to take the charge. One of the few times that Kansas State has been in transition, but didn't really have a numbers advantage. They passed ahead. But those are awfully difficult. Awfully difficult calls. I mean, that was an interesting one whether he was set or not. So it stays a 10 point game. Yesifu. Noel. That's his third. Now, Yesifu was looking into, he had pressure on it, but looking into Jalen Wilson, who was trying to post up Desi Sills. 17 foul against K-State, so yes, if would be at the line, both one and one. Yeah, both teams in the bonus. There's a long way to go in this one, so they're going to get some free throws down the stretch on common fouls. And Johnson and Gasson each going to come back and play with three fouls for K-State. More points off the bench for Yesifu tonight. Yeah, the bench for Kansas has been much more productive in this game than they've been in, in past Big 12 games. And that's a good sign for Kansas. Heading into the second half of Big 12 play. What a, what a crossover move. Gasson bodied up on Clements, makes a spin move from a tough angle. Falls to the court. And here comes Kansas. Three, Wilson. A quick shot is rebounded by Cam Carter. Not sure that was the shot. Had an advantage situation, attacked the rim. Noel. One bounce to Kansas. This game has kind of been stuck in a range. Right now, 12 point lead for KU as we're under 12 minutes to go in Lawrence. Don't you think that Jerome Tang's gonna have to settle for both? Like his fans can love his players, but they're still gonna hate KU, don't you think? I, I think they hated the Gators as well when they saw the Gator shop this past weekend. That may be a tough sell for them to uh, not hate KU. No question, the fingerprints of Jerome Tang are already all over this program, Jay. Back to the 2-3 zone out of the timeout. Here's Pettiford on the drive. What a strong drive by Bobby Pettiford. And he Acting like he pulled something. He's slow getting back. He's going to have to come out of the game. It appears that the next dead ball is Brady Dick got the rebound and John Higgins stopped it. I don't know whether he's cramping up or pulled something or what, but that was a powerful drive he made with his right hand. And he was, it looked like he was grabbing his right leg, but it might just be a cramp. That Band-aid that you see on the right side of Bobby Pettiford's face. I was asking what happened and he said yeah, my barber took the clippers and took a little bit too much off there, so <laughs> Yeah, he said so there's something on the, the clippers that reacted poorly with his skin I could vouch for that up on the top of my head 
But, but when I get a haircut, they charge me a finder's fee. It's not for the haircut. Great, you think. And Kansas has opened up their largest lead of the game of 16. Yeah, that was just too easy. A little ball reversal and then a drive, 45 degree angle drive. And Brady Dick went unmolested down the lane. Good pass. Gasson. And that's number four on Brady Dick right there. He will indeed. So he's going to join Uday. Each with four fouls for the Jayhawks. And that's mostly a positioning issue. As a help defender, you have to move as the ball moves. You're playing the ball, not necessarily your man. But that was a terrific roll to the basket by David Gasson. So Jalen Wilson going to take the spot of Brady Dick. So Jalen Wilson. Take a look at the parents. Jalen Wilson actually did come off the floor for 10 seconds in the first half after playing all 45 minutes in Manhattan two weeks ago. Yeah, that 10 second rest can really make the difference, don't you think? <laughs> I loved what you said a couple of games ago about Jalen Wilson, just his body language right now. It's not an arrogance, but it's just a confidence that he's playing with right now. Yeah, he's carrying himself like the star, and he knows it. And he's delivering under difficult conditions, game in, game out. Great ball movement by Kansas. Good outlet. Sills, a dribble. Nice dump off, but a foul first against the Jayhawks. And they call that on the floor. It's still going to be free throws. Two on Dewan Harris. Sills back to the line. Three is five is six tonight. One and one. Now Mark, even though Kansas has been shooting the three ball well, I don't think Kansas wants to settle. They still need to touch the paint on every possession. You know, force help, get the ball moving and put the Kansas State defense in a position to make some decisions and when you're making decisions you can make mistakes. Jayhawks have led almost the entire way tonight. K-State did have an early three-point lead three or four minutes into the game. Yes, a food drive block by Desi Sills. It comes all the way out to the other side. Tomlin gets it back. Missed the lay-in. Harris Oh, what a move. What a fake. Oh, that's, the, that's the kind of turnaround you can't have on the road. Miss a layup, give up a layup. And Johnson stumbling. Harris dies on the floor. Clements for Jalen Wilson. Boy, that was a magnificent move by Dewan Harris. Missed the layup, just shorted it, and then an advantage situation. But the fake pass that got David Gasson to bite on that fake and the easy layup, the look away, just a beautiful play by Dewan Harris. A foul on Gasson, his fourth first Wildcat to four fouls. Now McCuller holding his right hand is coming off the table. It's on his right hand and gonna get some attention from the training staff. Actually changed the foul to Tomlin instead of Gasson. Elon Wilson had a career high. 38 points in the first meeting with K-State two weeks ago. He's up to 20. A little slice cut, stagger action. Deontay with Harris on him, a little fade away, good. Well, he's so good in isolation, whether he's in the post, he can catch it a couple steps off the lane, still make a strong move. Deep range. He's only 6'6", but... Yeah, he is a county Johnson is a baller He had 24 against the Jayhawks two weeks ago 16th so far tonight with nine minutes to go Wilson Clements puts up the three 
All deflected by KJ Adams out to Harris. Blocking foul on the Sioux. Get an update on the Jayhawk injuries. Uh, here's Chris. Yeah, a couple injury updates. Bobby Pettiford, who had went into the locker room, just came back out, gave Bill Self a thumbs up that he's ready to go. Kevin McCuller has gone back into the locker room. I was watching him on the bench. He injured the, the knuckle. If you take your pointer finger and go down to the big knuckle, that was the area that he said was causing him the most pain. They asked him if he could clinch and make a fist, and he wasn't able to. Still back in the locker room. Chris, thanks. Chris is very well versed with the uh, anatomy of the hand. That was an excellent description. Pettiford still kind of maneuvering that right leg. Going back to that same play to isolate Johnson down on the block. This time he has Jalen Wilson defending him. It's a beautiful step to remove. Uh, you're worried about the turnaround jumper fade away. You bite on a little bit. And he just pivots through to get to the basket. And he's built like a linebacker, but yet still has touch. Just gives a little crab dribble and an up and under move. And that's what an up and under move looks like. Tickets on sale now for the 2023 Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. The men tip off March 8th. The women a day later. You can get your tickets online. Big12sports.com slash my tickets. We'll see you just up the road in Kansas City. Keontae Johnson, a double-double. 13 points, 11 rebounds against Florida on Saturday. It had to be an emotional game for him playing his former program. No question. But, but he's handled everything so well all year long. I mean, there's got to be emotion at every turn for Keontae Johnson. And right now, Mark, for Kansas State, this isn't about getting a stop. It's about getting consecutive stops. They need multiple stops to really put some pressure on Kansas. Seven to shoot and a travel. That'll count as a stop there as Kansas turns it over on a walk by Jalen Wilson. So this is post game in Manhattan on Saturday. A lot of uh, smiles from Keontae Johnson. Looks a lot like you when you got here today. <laughs> That's right. And Dallas Fieldhouse. Uh, do a few maneuvers. Kicks off the heel. Johnson. Good kick out. And that's Noel's three. Gasson. Will not be a fourth opportunity. Well, you missed point blank. That's deflating, especially on the road. Bedford back in the game. Harris. I balled Clements, but back for Jalen. Well, Clements was open, but probably a good idea to kick it back out. Adams scored a shoot, trying to get around Gasson, dumps it off, and there's Pettiford. Well, and how many times have we seen that in this game, where Kansas State has an opportunity to score, they miss point blank, and Kansas gets a score. No else. Missed the lay, but there was contact according to Marcus Pettigrew. And he's going to go to the line to shoot two. When we come back, Jerome Tang's team down 15 with 17 to play at Lawrence. Play ahead of the Kansas State defense. And most of the game, Kansas State has been grinding it out against Kansas's half court defense. So we come out of the timeout with Noel at the line shooting two. It's just been hard for Kansas State to chip away, and especially they've missed so many around the basket. And look, there has been body contact, but Kansas State just 4 of 11 on shots near the rim. McCuller pass over the top for Adams, able to collect it and score. That's just a little box set with a cutter just to get an angle to throw it in to K.J. Adams, got his defender that was basically fronting him on the high side, and he just held his ground, they threw over the top. Design play. Johnson, he's just gonna back Pettiford in. 
fires it to Gasson, who had a little juggle before collecting, and now a streaking Noel with the left hand scores. Oh, just a beautiful cut by Marquise Noel. But it's still a 14 point game, and Kansas State has to string together consecutive stops. And thus far in the game, they haven't been able to do it. They have cut down on the turnovers. They had 10 at the half. They've turned it over just twice so far in the second half. It's a McCuller long two. Still six minutes to go here in Lawrence. They stayed down 14. Going for the emphatic dunk. And Johnson wanted a foul. It goes the other way, and Wilson dribbled it off his foot. Well, Keontae Johnson, his eyes got big when he saw Uday on him. Just blew right past him. Just couldn't get the ball to go. Looked like there was some contact as he was going up for it. And he's talking to the official saying, you kidding me, man? You think you didn't foul me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kip Kissinger have a little laugh. Well, blind pass. Here's a lob. Nicely executed and finished there by David Gasson. Well, that was a design play. Get it to Tomlin in the short corner. That collapses the defense and then get the cut down to the basket. Good, good throw out of the ball screen off the trap. That was Johnson. Got a piece of it. Saved by McCullough for Kansas. Twisted back to Wilson for a deep three. Adams deflects it. McCuller now bumped by Keontae Johnson, and that is going to be number four on Keontae. Kansas just quicker to the ball. KJ Adams keeping it alive. And there's so many times when KJ Adams, he may not be able to grab the ball himself, but he keeps it alive. And it's been a long night for Jerome Tang, and I know he's looking up at the scoreboard saying, We're down 12. You start thinking about, you know, we finished some plays. You know, we got to stop here. We got a loose ball. I and mean, this game could feel a lot different going down the last five minutes of regulation. Kevin McCuller, Two shots for McCuller, who, by the way, has a dozen rebounds tonight, which is tied a career high for him. Got the hand and knuckle situation not bothering him there. Yeah, There's three double doubles in a row for Kevin McCuller. Which is the second one as well. And Kansas. Up 14. For every ball screen that Marquise Noel has come off of, he's facing two Kansas defenders. Gasson is fouled. Well, you and I have to shoot around today. That was certainly a point of emphasis for Bill Self. They were going to try to trap him, double him as much as possible. Yeah, you, you don't want to switch on Marquise Noel. They've been switching just about everything else, but they've not switched on him. And forcing him to get it out of his hands makes somebody else make a play instead of him making the play. See, the, the quick double for a couple of dribbles and then recover, and he's not able to throw out fast enough. Then another double. It's not like he can't make plays out of that, but Kansas just made it so difficult on him. And you're asking him to thread needle after needle. Well, just under five minutes to go. 12-point game. Still a lot of time left here, Jay, but as you mentioned, it's been K-State inability to get multiple stops. Maybe that'll help. For K State as a travel committed by Jalen Wilson. The second travel they've gotten on him in about the last three, four minutes that he's been confused on. Now Brady Dick back in the ball game with those four fouls. So that allows Kansas to spread the floor and spread the defense because of his shooting ability. So now Kansas State slipping out of those ball screens quickly, making the double a little bit more difficult. McCuller. That's number four on Kevin McCuller as he knocked Noel to the court. And that's basically, I think, what Kansas State needs to do is you can ghost or blur these ball screens or just slip out of them right away.
And don't forget this Saturday here on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus, 15th ranked TCU head to Stillwater. They'll take on Oklahoma State. That's a two Eastern, one Central. We can get right here on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus. TCU's got to get healthy. They've got some key guys, Mike Miles in particular, out. Yeah, they were banged up in their last ball game. Led to help lead to that overtime loss. I mean, Mike Miles was out early in that game. Only Lampkin. played four minutes. Lampkin is well out. Well, it's a 10 point game. Jayhawks have led by as many as 16. KJ Adams has a good matchup down low with Sills. Wilson looking that way, but now they get KJ up top. It's five on the shot clock. Pettiford just kind of flings it towards Adams. Did hit the rim in time to avoid a shot clock violation, and Pettiford comes away with it for the Jayhawks. Another loose ball. Brady Dick tipped around by Tomlin into the arms of Sills. Here he comes with Johnson as well as Gasson. And a carry committed by Desi Sills. 3.43 to go. K-State has gotten it down to a 10-point game at the Fieldhouse. This is to the players and, and how much they put into it. You know, a team that's 0-8 you know, gets, gets a win. Uh, and it, it brought Davion Harmon to, to tears. You know, that was really affecting as to, to how, how seriously these players take winning and how hard they work for it. It's a 23-point deficit they came back from. And Dewan Harris, who hit an early three of this game, knocks down his second of the day. Well, that was all about moving the ball from side to side, getting downhill and drawing help. Kansas foul underneath the basket as Pettiford and Wilson are ready to head up court. Seems like every time that Kansas State creeps a little closer and they haven't been able to break through, Kansas has had an answer. Just turning the corner, getting downhill, drawing defensive help off the corner shooter, and Dewan Harris wide open for that simple corner jumper. Kansas, by the way, will be at Iowa State on Saturday. Early tip, 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN. Hilton Coliseum, as you know, is no joke. Oh, that place gets as loud as anywhere. Great environment. And Kansas doesn't have to be in a hurry here. Good cut. Oh, the feed. Harris couldn't finish that after the nice bounce pass from Pettiford. And there's Gasson missing a layup. And another missed bunny there by the Wildcats. Okay, you will eat some clock. K-State hit 90% of their layups tonight. Jay, this would be a completely different game. They're completely different. I mean, so many opportunities missed. Well, gets to the rim. Wow. He's got guts, doesn't he? Not afraid. Well, it's down to nine with under two and a half minutes to go. 23 for Noel. Hands is spreading the floor. That opens up cutting and driving lanes. Just trying to turn the corner, get a piece of the paint, draw help, and then play out of it. Harris. Thought for a moment he was looking at Adams for a lob, but instead he just shot it and scored. He was. He was looking for the lob. The defense came off and just shot the floater. Keontae. The block by Adams. Well, that's a great block from behind the play. You know, the athleticism of K.J. Adams taking away a basket. Now Kansas can run some clock. And I think Kansas State has to think about if they want to get back in it, are they going to foul? Eighteen for Dewan Harris. I think he's back. That ties a career high for Harris. When he's played a great floor game, Mark, I mean, his defense on Marquise Noel has been outstanding. He's made everything difficult. And his intangibles have been off the charts. You know, he's run the team, low error rate, not, you know, he hasn't been turning the ball over. 
And he's had open opportunities, he's cutting open shots, he's done everything well. Keontae. It's 20 now for Keontae Johnson, timeout K-State with 67 seconds remaining. Take it. And his productivity level and his leadership at both ends of the floor have been vital for Kansas to remain a top 10 team. That mark he has broken belonged to Wayne Simeon for most points by a Jayhawk in five straight games during the Big 12 era. Yeah, well, Will Chamberlain and Danny Manning are on line too. <laughs> Is a foul committed by Gasson to stop it with just a half tick under one minute to go. That is kind of a curious decision of all the records. See Wayne hey, Simeon right there. there he Great is. player in Bill Self's first year. One of three Jayhawks, including Jalen Wilson. The season's not over, but they average 20 points per game, over 20 points per game for a season. The other being Frank Mason. But yeah, you had all those years of big eight and you know, the, the records are I mean, they're still there but I don't know where where you go to look at them I guess the big eight because when the big eight and the Southwest Conference teams Created the big 12 they left the the big eight records behind Which doesn't make any sense to me. I agree I mean, the ACC got bigger and teams left and there's still ACC records You know Mitch Richmond played in the big eight, but His records still matter at K-State. Yeah and they should. Yes. Well, the only record that matters right now for Kansas is 1-0, and and they have protected the rim. You see the difference in block shots? This has been a, an excellent defensive effort by Kansas, and Kevin McCuller, chief among the reasons why Kansas's defense has been so effective against K-State. Let me get deep and philosophical on you here, Jay. Okay, Socrates, go ahead. All right, here we go. How important was the Kansas win at Kentucky spilling over into this game for the Jayhawks? I think it was huge. Uh, it, it's, you know, you used to call those things mental health wins, and you, you, you want to be sensitive about using that term, but you, know, you, you start doubting yourself when you go into a losing streak. They've lost three in a row. Their schedule is so difficult. And you know this better than I do. The Big 12 has no bottom. There is nowhere you go to get healthy where you know, every game you play in this league, you can play well and still lose. Uh, you have to play really well to win in this league. And the number of quad one games that you have back to back to back, I mean, it's, uh, it's remarkable. No other league has the kind of resistance top to bottom that the Big 12 offers. And you wonder at the end of the year, is that going to make all these teams tougher? Or is there going to be an argument that when you get to the tournament, you can be worn out a little bit, banged up? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but it sure makes the regular Big 12 season as entertaining as it can be. Each team shooting north of 35 free throws tonight. McCuller, by the way, fouled out. Third time he's fouled out this year, twice against K-State. You know, there are a lot of great traditions in, in sports. I'm not sure there's anything better than the Rock Chop Jayhawk thing. I mean, I love Emaw and all of it. You know, if you're not ranking it, but it's hard to imagine something more affecting than that Rock Chop Jayhawk chant in this building. K-State will drop to 6-3 and three in conference. KU will improve to 6-3. and three. Jayhawks at Iowa State Saturday. K-State gets Texas in Manhattan on Saturday. Wilson, final seconds, tick off. A 12 point win for the Jayhawks. Round two, part two of this rivalry goes to the Jayhawks tonight. 90 to 78. The Jayhawks have won 17.